Yeah, that's great for all great for all people that have the same just to
I want to pray that you bless us here today. Meet with us. May you have your will in your way. God, I pray, Lord, that you just meet with us. God, I pray that we, Lord, see uh, backsliders reclaimed. And God, I pray, Lord, for somebody here today that's lost. May they come to know you as Savior before it's eternally too late. And I pray that you bless us, please. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
doing all right?
Yeah. Hey, so, yeah. We'll see you, friend. Thank you. Thank you. Sunday, choir practice at 4.30. 
Uh, and then the Sunday evening service. Sunday evening service, we're all going over to uh, God Can Baptist Church in Bessemer City, and we're going to have service over there. Uh, the Fletchers will be there singing. Then immediately after the service, we're going to excuse me, we're going to take care of all the camp uh, paperwork. Okay. So if you're planning on going to youth camp, then you need to be there at God Can. And if you don't know where it's at, get with me, and I'll give you directions or work out a way to get you there. Uh, but after the service, we're going to take care of all the camp paperwork. Okay. Uh, how many people in here are planning on going to camp? How many people are just wanting to go to youth camp this year? next Sunday, and then uh, the youth camp is going to be June 16th through the 19th. Uh, it's Monday through Thursday, and we're going up to the Green Mountain Resort. Our church is combined with uh, God Camp Baptist Church and going up there and going to have a good time. The Fletchers will be up there singing on that Monday night, and we're going to have services night. And so, and we're uh, also that Wednesday night, the 18th, we're not going to have service here. Anybody wants to come up to the camp and join us for the Wednesday night service up there, feel free to do so, and I'll get directions to everybody uh, to where the camp's at, okay? Uh, and then, June the 29th, June the 29th, that Sunday morning, we want to get everybody together here at the church that we can on that Sunday morning. Uh, we're going to try, weather permitting, we're going to gather out front after the service and take a big group picture, a big church family picture, uh, with us being here in the new building, and then we're going to break it in right. And then we're Baptist. Amen! Amen! Hey. Let's go, Ricky. Come on. Come on. So ask everybody to bring food. Amen. Amen. Bring, bring food. Amen. Right? Those up sitting up here. Amen. 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 We're going to eat after we take the picture. We're going to eat after we take the picture. Okay? We eat before. Y'all are going to have spaghetti stains. <laughs> we'll take the picture before, then we'll eat. Uh, then on that Sunday night, Brother John Yelton. Uh, we'll be, be preaching here on that Sunday night. And then the big announcement for July, July the 20th through the 25th, that Sunday night through Friday night, uh, we have a revival here. Brother Robert Fraley and his family will be with us. Brother Robert will be preaching. He and his family will be singing. And on that Friday night, on that Friday night, we're going to have a uh, spaghetti supper here at the church, okay? Uh, right after the service, okay? So if you've got any questions about any of these announcements, uh, feel free to get up with me after the service and I'll clear up any questions that you may have. Let's go ahead and take up the uh, ties and offices. Let's go to the new building phone, y'all. Amen. Amen. All right, let's take up the uh, let's take up the tithes and offerings here this morning. And I want to ask everybody, will this give us God has blessed you? Amen. Amen. And I promise you, the Lord will bless you more in return. All right, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Anthony, we give you prayer. Father, Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come to our new building. Lord, I pray that you help us be the tithes in the office. Lord, thank you for loving us and caring for us. Thank you for our new building, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Page four. When I survey the one is crossed. Page four. Once you have a place where we stand saying. Amen. 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 Here's a put put that in the uh, put that in the plan.
And the Bible says, ask, ask for God. His way is perfect. Amen. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in Him. Yeah. As for God, His way is perfect. Yeah. I want you to look at that, that first little line there. As for God, His way is perfect. Right. Now, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, the Bible says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Amen. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. I want you to look at that first part of that verse in Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Now look at Hebrews 13, 8. The Bible says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. So I want you to look at the parts here out of these verses. As for God, His way is perfect. For I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Right. I'm going to preach you this morning a message entitled, You Can Keep the Change. Let's pray. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank You again for allowing us to be in Your house. God, I thank You, Lord, for the crowd that's here. God, I thank You, Lord, for, Lord, for friends and family, Lord, being here. God, I thank You for that. God, I thank You, Lord, for the sweet spirit, Lord God, we feel in this place. And God, I just want to thank You for all Your many blessings. God, I thank You, Lord, for, Lord, for the good choir songs. I thank You, Lord God, for the wonderful special that was sung. God, I thank you for all that. But Lord, now it's preaching time. God, I pray that you give me power and wisdom, clarity of mind and clarity of speech. So God, I pray that the message today will be a help and a blessing to us all. May we take heed to it and apply it to our lives so that we can have a closer walk with you. God, I pray this above everything. If there's someone here today that's lost and don't know you get saved, Lord, I pray they get saved today for it's eternally too late. Help us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody can be seated. Say the title of the message is, You Can Keep the Change. Now I want to read those, those little, those little uh, segments out of these three verses here to you again. In Psalm 1830, that first line says, As for God, His way is perfect. In Hebrews, uh, excuse me, in Malachi 3.6, it says that first line there, For I am the Lord, I change not. And in, the, in Hebrews 13.8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And I said that the title of the message today is, is You Can Keep the Change. You Can Keep the Change. Now I know you're saying, boy, that's kind of that's kind of hypocritical to preach a message entitled, You Can Keep the Change, when we're having our very first service in a new building. We've changed locations. But there's a big difference in what I'm going to be talking about. There's some change that's acceptable, and there's some change that's not. Amen. Amen. We, Amen. Amen. we serve a God that never changes. Amen. Yeah, that's right. His way is perfect. So if His way is perfect, then why, why change anything that God has established? Amen. You know, today man tries to change the things of God to fit their lifestyles. Man, we're seeing that more and more today, are we not? We see it on the news every single day. We see, we're see, we seeing it in our country. We're seeing it in our government. And Lord God, we're seeing it in our churches. Right? Right. Where people are changing some things. Amen. We're yeah, seeing these right. things where those changes are coming about. But they're not good changes yeah. that bring honor and glory to Reach. God. Amen. Right. Come on. Come on. We serve a God that never changes. And His way is perfect. So why should we change? Yeah. Man yeah. tries to change the things of God to fit their lifestyles instead of doing what is right and changing their ways to match His ways. Amen? Yeah. We, ought, we ought not change the things that God has established right. to fit our lifestyles, Amen. but that we ought to conform our lifestyles to fit God's things right. that He's laid out for us. Amen. I want to say this here this morning. Do you know why, I'm going to ask this question here, do you know why the Ten Commandments was made out of stone? Because stone, you cannot be in stone. You either abide by it, or you break it. Right. There's no gray area. There's a lot of people out there they try to preach and teach that there's a gray area there. I'm telling you the Word of God is black and white. Amen? It's either right or it's wrong. Amen? Amen. There's no Amen. between. There's no gray area. You either abide by God's standards or you, don't, or you decide not to go by His standards and break His laws and break His commands and then you'll be in trouble with God. Yes. Amen. You can't be in stone. You either abide by it or you break it. God has put His, His law in the stone. Yeah. Now let me say here this morning, I do not mind change if the change magnifies the Lord. Amen? Yeah. 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 You know, let me say this about the building. I know that everybody come to, everybody's coming expecting to hear something about our building. <laughs> I 
like to change. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all in here, you've been to the old building <laughs> at least once? The old building, the one we just came from. I know we're still in three sections. <laughs> but I don't have to lean around a wall to right. see anybody. Right. We don't have to put up a little camera with a little monitor over here just so somebody sitting 10 feet in front of me can see me. Amen? Amen. I like that change. Amen. Everybody take a deep breath here this morning. Let it out. Tic Tacs, please. <laughs> no, you see, you see, did you get dust in your nose? Man, bless God, that building we were in had mold and dust. And it was so dark over here, and we got stuck over here. We, Lord, man, that was, I thought we had brand new toys in the nursery. <laughs> we had clean it. it was all black over there in the other place. You know what? There's some change that's good. When you make a change in your life and it's to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ and to draw attention to Him and draw attention to the Gospel and draw attention to the blood, amen, and salvation, when there's changes made for that purpose, then I'm all for the change. But when the change starts taking its focus off the Lord, it starts taking its focus off the things of God, it starts taking its focus away from the preaching of the Word of God and the Word of God itself, then I'm all for that change. Let's go. Christians need convictions and standards. I believe that, amen. Yeah, amen. I believe that Christians ought to have some convictions and have some standards about this. Right. Man, we ought not change on some things. Churches are becoming too liberal nowadays, and there are some things I will not change. Amen. There's amen. some things that you can just keep the change on. So I'm going to talk about that just for a little bit here this morning. Let's say number one here this morning, we don't need another word. We don't need another word. Go ahead. There's other versions of the Bible that takes verses and takes words out. Oh. You know, there's versions of the Bible that remove yeah. so many words and so many verses they almost remove entire books of the Bible when it all, when you add up all the words. The NIV removes so many words, so many thousands of words that it equals thirty complete books of the Bible. Why in God's name would anybody want to change God's word? Yeah. That's right. Why, why, would you, why would you want a Bible that takes hell out? Yep. You know what? There is a hell. It's a real place. Oh, God, I'm not going there again. Amen. 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 Why in God's name would you want a Bible that removes heaven out of the Bible? Yeah. Why would you want a Bible that in the Lord's Prayer removes His power and His kingdom? Amen? Yep. Amen. Why would you want something like that? Come on. I don't need another word. I've got this King James Bible. Amen. Let me say this too. I don't need somebody coming to me and prophesying to me. Right, come on. Amen. I don't need somebody coming to me and prophesying to me. Stand up, son. Preacher, I, I perceive. I perceive that down the road God's going to bless you. I perceive down the road that you're going to. I don't need that. And I'll tell you why I don't need somebody prophesying to me. Everybody take your Bibles and turn it to the back. Turn it to the back. The last verse in your Bible. Somebody gets that last verse. Tell me what the last thing it says. Read that last verse. Whoever gets that first. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. If I've got the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ with me, then I don't need anybody else telling me anything else that may help me or give me warning down the road. Amen. If they're prophesying and say, God told me to tell. I don't need somebody stand up and say, God told me to tell you, brother, that you need to look. No. I got God's Word. Amen. I don't need no more prophecy. Yeah. I don't need anybody tell me that. Right. God has given me a complete book. Amen. amen. That's all I need. Amen. amen. Notice how it finishes with amen. Yeah. Period. Amen. Close it out. Amen. Close out the book. I don't need anything else. I don't need another word. Amen? Amen. I don't need another word. 
I love my King James Bible. I don't need anybody to give me any more prophecy because I got a complete book. I don't need anybody else telling me that God spoke to them and tell me that God gave me all that I need. He gave me 66 books to abide by. Amen. Amen. That's all I need. Now let me say this. I don't need another word. I don't need another gospel. Yeah. I don't need another gospel. The gospel is simply this. The death the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't need another gospel. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what, the only way to heaven is for the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's no other way to have forgiveness of sins than to trust in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now I know that there's people out there that teach and preach that you know the gospel plus that you have to believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and be baptized. And they try to use the Bible to back that up. But that's where people have to rightly divide the word of the truth. Yeah. Right. I'm going to tell you, no one, there's only one thing that can wash away sins. Everybody here knows that song. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Did, did, why, why didn't y'all say, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the water in the baptismal pool. <laughs> <laughs> right, come, on, come on. If that was the case, bless God, everybody in this church would be going to hell. Because since we started, we ain't had a baptismal pool. <laughs> if you want to get baptized today, I'll take you to the bathroom and flush you. Because we don't have a baptismal pool. <laughs> I don't, need, I don't need another gospel. Amen. I don't need another gospel. It's, good. it's simply the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Nothing else added to it. Nothing more, nothing less. It is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and nothing else. There's nothing else that can get a person to heaven than trusting in that death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that a long time ago, about 25 years ago, I remember I remember I had, I had a Sunday school teacher that challenged me to learn John 3, 16. And as I, as I began to learn that verse and study that verse so that I could, the whole reason why I was being challenged to learn that verse was I was trying, I was five years old and I was trying to win five dollars. My Sunday school teacher, Carol Curtin, now had challenged us that the first person that could learn John 3, 16 should give him five dollars. And I was all about some five dollars. <laughs> and I was thinking, I was thinking all, I was thinking of all, I don't even like marshmallows, but back then I did. And I was thinking, what is marshmallow peanuts? Those little orange things? Ugh, things nasty, man. When I was a kid, I loved them things. And I was thinking, man, all the little marshmallow peanuts I could buy were five dollars. And so I, I got, I got my family to help me start studying that verse so that I could memorize it, so I could be the first one to quote it to get the five dollars. You know what? And then it happened to me. As I was start, at five years old, studying that verse, trying to memorize it, I began to start to understand what that verse meant. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, who swore to believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. And as I started studying that verse, I started, I began to start really realizing what that verse meant. That I was in the world and that God loved me. And though I don't deserve His love, He loved me anyway. That's right. And that He sent His Son Jesus Christ to die for me. And all I had to do was accept Him and I get to go to heaven and my sins are washed away. Amen. I love the Gospel message. Amen. I will tell you why I love the Gospel message. Because it's what set me free. Right. I don't need another Gospel. It's what is going to get me to heaven. Amen. Amen. I don't need another Gospel. I don't need another gospel. I mean, I don't need somebody telling me that I need to go speak in tongues in order to go to heaven. Oh, hey, amen. Oh, oh. How many of y'all have heard that before? Man. That you got to get, you got to be saved and baptized and show evidence of speaking in tongues before you go to heaven. I remember Papa used to, Papa told me a long time ago when he got saved, he didn't know much about church, didn't know much about the Bible. When he got saved, he knew he got saved. And he was all excited because there were some Christians at work where he worked at, and he wanted to go and tell them. And when he went to work, he told a few of them, he was excited for him and called him brother, and he went to one man. And this one man, he told him that he got saved and he accepted Jesus into his heart. And that man said, but did he speak in tongues? My boy had never even heard of him. Never heard of him speaking in tongues before. And it kind of, what? And it started to confuse him a little bit. You know what? Jesus, our Lord, He's not the God is not the altar of what? Confusion. Yeah. God's not the altar of confusion. 
I don't need somebody telling me that I need the gospel and this. Amen. It's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Amen. Christ. I love the gospel message. It's what God's called me to proclaim. And if there's one thing, you know what? I'm not very smart. Amen. Amen. Shut up, Amen. Man. I'm not very smart. Amen. Shut up, George. I get more amens when I'm not very smart than we don't need to know the gospel. Amen. I'm going to get Kevin to cut my hair. <laughs> oh, back to I'm not very smart. Amen. <laughs> I, I, I graduated high school. I don't have any education really after high school. I work a manual labor job. And you know what? There's a lot of things in this world that I don't know. But let me tell you this. There's one thing, bless God, that I do know. And I know this. That the gospel is the only way to heaven. Yeah. And God has called yeah. me yeah. to yeah. play yeah. the gospel yeah. message. And I'm going to tell you what exactly what it is. The Bible says in Romans chapter number 3 and verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah. And I want everybody here to know that we're all sinners. Starting yeah. with a preacher. Yeah. Working the way out to the congregation. And opening the choir hall. I'm a sinner. Yeah. And you're a sinner. For all of us sin to come short of the glory of God. Because of our sin, not one of us, not one of us, deserve to go to heaven. Yeah. I don't deserve it at all. I tell you exactly what all my throat deserves. I deserve to die. I deserve to bust hell wide open. And I deserve to burn there for all eternity and never get out. Because you know what? I know who I am. And I know what I have done. I know my thoughts. I know my actions and I know the words that I have said. Let, let me tell you for sure, my throat's a sinner. I'm not proud of it. And there's some things in my sinful past I wouldn't dare tell you because I'd be embarrassed. And I'm sure everybody in here would be honest this morning. You would agree with me. You're a sinner. You're a sinner. And you would agree and be just like me that there's things in your past that you wouldn't dare tell anybody because of how bad it is. Hey, a good person in here. Preacher, I didn't come to hear that this morning. You come to hear the truth. Yeah. I'm going to give you the truth. Amen. There's not a good person in here. There are none righteous. No, not one. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. There are none righteous. No, not one. For all of us here to come short of the word of God because of our wrong will, we don't deserve it. Amen. Amen. And I'm so glad that the gospel doesn't end right there. Right. Right. I'm glad that the Bible goes on to say, yep. Romans 6 23, for the wages of sin is death, but I'm so glad yeah. that that conjunction is there. Amen. Yeah. I'm glad it don't just end for the wages of sin is death because you know what? For the wages of sin is death. We all deserve to die a physical death and we all deserve to die a spiritual death. Amen? Because Amen. of our wrongdoing, because of our sin. But I am so glad that that verse goes on to say, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm so glad that despite my sin, despite my fault, and despite my failures, I get to live forever. Amen? I get to go to heaven and I can walk in the streets of glory. Amen. You say, well, how can I obtain that preacher? This is the great thing about the gospel message. How can I obtain that preacher? Let me tell you. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible goes on to say, Romans chapter number 10 and verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe with thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. See, it's, you see what, what, what was there in Romans chapter number 10 and verse 9? Let me quote it to you again. And pay close attention to what the verse says. Romans chapter number 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Do you see anywhere, did you hear anywhere in there where it said you had to be baptized? Did you see, did you hear anywhere in there where you had to speak in tongues? Did you hear anything in there where you had to be live a perfect life afterwards? Oh. Did you hear anything in there about church membership? Oh. Did you hear anything in there about giving money to the church? No. I heard that, that, that you that you realize that you're a sinner and you confess those sins to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And accept Him as Savior and you'll be saved. You say, preacher, I've been too bad. I've done too much wrong in my life. I've done too much wrong. 
Preacher, you don't know my past. You don't know all that I've done. No, you're right. I don't know your past, and I don't know all the wrong that you've done. And maybe we got bank robbers in here. Maybe we've got murderers in here. Maybe we've got drug dealers in here. I don't know. Because a lot of people, they can live a double standard life. They can live one thing in front of you and live an entirely different life away from you. So I don't know. But maybe we do have that amongst us here this morning. But let me tell you this, what the Bible says. Romans chapter number 10, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord right. shall be saved. Amen. He didn't say, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, except that bank robber, except that murderer. No. The Bible said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means anybody. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how, how wicked your past is. It don't matter how much sin you've done. You can be the worst sinner that this world has ever seen. Yeah. And I want you to know that it can, you cannot, you cannot out-sin the love of God. Amen. You cannot out-sin God's grace. You cannot out-sin His mercy. God has enough. He's got grace. He's got on top of grace. Amen. Yeah. His grace is sufficient. Amen. Amen. And if you accept Him in your heart, He can wash all your sins away. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I'm here to tell you, I don't need another word. I don't need another book. Amen. Right. Amen. I'm going to stick with that King James Bible. I don't need prophecy. i got enough prophecy with these 66 books. I just open it up and read it. Right. I don't need another gospel. Because if it's yeah. good enough to get me to heaven, then why do I want to improve on that? Right. Oh. I don't need it. You can keep the change, amen. Amen. I'll tell you this, we don't need to run away. We don't need another way. Let's say this. I love the old time way. Amen. I, I love the old time way. Amen. Amen. I don't need the new ways. Yeah. Don't give me new methods. Don't get don't give me a new book. Don't give me don't give me all this new way junk. Amen. I like the old time way. Amen. And you say, well, Amen. the old time way is outdated, and the old time way don't work. Bless God, open up your eyes and look around you here this morning. Right. Amen. The old time way works. God has blessed us in the old building. I'm giving God all the glory here this morning. Our very first service in the brand new building. Doing it the old fashioned way. Doing it the old time way. Look at it. Bless God. Don't tell me the old time way don't work. Don't tell me that God's not in the old time way. Send me out the old path. Where it is the good way. I don't need that new way. I don't need the old way. You know what? If you want to go and start a church and do it a new way, God help you. Go do it. I'll pray for you. God bless you. And I hope that the Lord is in it. And I hope He blesses you. But as for me and my house, this this church house here, we'll serve the Lord. Amen. 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 I like these old hymn books. Come on, man. I like the old songs in these books. There's songs in here, 100, 150 years old. I like them. Amen. They were back then. People got saved off of hearing those songs. Old time preaching. Amen. I like it. I don't need another way. And just because, hey, no, listen to me. Just because that we moved into a new building doesn't mean that we're going to change our way. Come on, hey. the old time come on, come on. Y'all heard Amen. what I said last Amen. Sunday. Amen. Those of y'all was at church last Sunday, you heard what I said. Amen. We moved out here in this new building. And it changes us in any way. I'll humble myself and get down on my knees and crawl back to fill a bunch and ask him to let us crawl back in to that rotten building that we just come out of where the floors are falling out of it and mold everywhere. Because I'm going to tell you, the Spirit of God was moving in that place. Amen. Amen. Down here, uh, the Spirit of God ain't here. I'll humble myself and crawl back and say, Phil, we'll pay you a thousand dollars. I'm not changing. Amen. I'm not changing. Amen. Not changing. <coughs> we don't need to know what. And I'm going to tell you this. You don't need to work away. Jesus is in you. That's right. I work with Buddhists. There's a lot, a lot of Laos people that I work with out the plant. A lot of Buddhism in the plant. You know what? They're very accepting of Christianity and their own beliefs. This world, this world nowadays, you go to college campuses, you go to college campuses, and you talk to them, oh man. They're just open and accepting to any religion. Right. You know, you know what? I can I can look at Buddhism and I can find some good things in Buddhism. There's some good moral values in Buddhism. 
But Buddha's not going to get you out of Come on, Rod. Come on. Yeah. Right. Hey, I even see some standards, some good standards. Some, you know, some. Very few. But I see some standards in Islam that I think are very good that might you know, be good for anybody. But Islam's not going to get you to heaven. Come on. That's right. There's only one person. Right. Come on. That's going to get you to heaven. Amen. That is Lord Jesus Christ. John 14, 6 says, John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus Amen. Christ is your Lord. So if you're considering change, let's God keep the change. I don't want that. There's just some things on my clothes I'm going to change. Amen. I'm hard-headed and I'm stubborn. Amen. There's just some things I'm not changing. Amen. I'm not changing on my Bible. Yeah. I'm not changing on my stance on my Bible. Right. I'm not changing my doctrine for anybody. Amen. I'm not changing the gospel to fit anybody else or to please anybody else. Amen. I'm sticking to the old time way. Amen. And I'm going to serve Amen. Jesus Christ to the day I die. Amen. Amen. How about you? Amen. Amen. How about you? You won't change? There's some good change. Let me tell you this, the things I mentioned here, if you go out these standards that I put out here, God will make some good changes in your life. Amen. God will make some good changes in your life. I've seen it in some of the folks here in our church. When you accepted the Lord and started to serve the Lord, I saw change in your life that was good and magnified the Lord. But then I've seen others come into the church and there's been some changes made that didn't line up with this. And the change in their lives has been in the negative. We've seen it within our church in a short period of time. We've seen people come and we've seen some go because their father didn't see it. Because they did not abide by this book and they did not abide by these standards that we laid out here. God blesses those that stick with Him. We have a God that does not change. And if we, if we hook up with God's way, and say and make up our minds and be determined I'm not going to change this is God's way and it's going to be this way for me no matter what and God's blessings will be good to you but if you decide that your way is better and you decide to make a change in your life you'll be nothing to go down because see when we go our own way that's pride I don't need anybody I'm going my own way. I don't need God. Whether you realize it or not, that's what you're saying. When you go your own way, when you step away from God's standards, try it. Come on. Then you're going, you're going your own way. You don't realize what you're telling God, I don't need you. You're right. And by saying, tell God, I don't need you, then that's pride. The Bible says that pride go before fall. Pride. 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 Only leads you falling down. God doesn't want us to go down. God wants us to go up. Because as the church goes up and the Christian goes up, we lift Jesus up. And what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say in the book of John? What does Jesus say? That if he be lifted up, he'd draw all men to be. See, if we live our lives in accordance to God's word and take a firm stance upon God's standards and do not change on those things. God will lift us up. God lifts us up. We'll be lifting Him up for the whole world to see. Amen. And people will be saved. Do you want change? And if you do, what kind of change do you want? Every head bowed, every eye closed when I look around here this morning. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today. <coughs> all heads bowed, all eyes closed. Everybody looking around here this morning. I want to ask you these things. Is there anybody in here this morning? You don't have to raise your hand on this. I just want you to thank you. So, is there anybody here this morning? There's been some changes in your life. And have not been for the good. There's been some changes in your life, and it's not honoring God. If that's you here this morning. This altar is open. You can come.
cover your front, give to the Lord, and God will help you with it. Is there anybody like Eric Smith? That she just offers over. You know what? You maybe have made that change and has led you into a direction that's not, not pleasing to the Lord. Why don't you come down to the altar this morning and say, Lord, I give it to you. Lord, change me back to what you have me to be. I'm going to ask this. Is there anybody here this morning you want some change in your life? <laughs> you want to change in accordance to the Word of God. You want to have purpose in your life. You want to have God in your life and feel God's power in your life. And you want God's blessings upon you and your home. You want God's blessings upon your church. And you want to see some things change in that direction. I want you to know the only one that can make the right kind of changes in your life is the Lord Jesus Christ. If you cast all your cares upon Him, hey, cast all your cares upon Him for He cares for you. The Lord cares about you. And whatever it is that you're struggling with, whatever it is that you're battling with, whatever it is that has changed in your life that's not pleasing to the Lord, you can give it to Him and He can change it back. That's the kind of God we serve. You want some peace in your life and comfort in your life and joy restored in your life? Give it to the Lord. The Lord can make the proper changes to help you. All heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. I want to ask you a question. Is there anybody here today that if you were to die right now, nobody's looking. All heads are bowed. All eyes are closed. I'm the only one looking right. If you were to die today and you're not sure that you would go to heaven, if you were to draw your last breath right now, and you're not sure that you can go to heaven. I want you to slip up your hand. I want to pray for you. Not going to call you out. Not going to single you out in front of anybody. Wouldn't dare embarrass anybody in here. Is there anybody like that would say that? I see that hand. Is there anybody else that would say, Preacher, I'm not sure that I'd go to heaven. If I were to die right now, if I were to draw my last breath, Preacher, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. Is there anybody like that? I saw one hand go up. I see that hand. Thank you so much. I see that hand. Thank you so much. Is there anybody else? If you were to die today, you're not sure that you'd go to heaven. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. We are not promised tomorrow. We are not promised the very next breath we take. So I ask again, is there anybody else here that if you were to die today, you're not sure that you'd go to heaven? Would you slip up again? I want to pray for you. I saw my three hands go up. Is there anybody else? To those that slipped up their hands and maybe to those that heard the question and wanted to raise your hand but just couldn't muster up the courage to do it. I want to ask you with all heads bowed, all eyes closed, <coughs> those that slipped up their hands and those that wanted to, I want to ask you to come down to this altar and let us take the Bible and pray with you and show you how you can know for sure that you go to heaven. Why don't you come? You're not promised tomorrow. we got more to come. we got two to come. Anybody else? You're not sure that you go to heaven. Why don't you come up here in front? All heads are out, all eyes are closed, Christians around the church. Y'all pray. Praying for these here in the altar. Is there anybody else? If you were to die today, you're not sure that you go to heaven. I, I believe this. I do not believe that you're here by accident. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that God allows us and directs us in a path that He'd have us to go. And I believe that you're here for a reason. And I believe that the reason why that you're here this morning, if you're lost, that if you're not sure that you go to heaven, you're here for the very reason to hear the way to heaven. And I want you to know that the world offers so many different ways. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ is the only way. And I want you to know that this may be your only chance. You are not promised tomorrow. People of all ages die every single day. And this may be your last opportunity to hear a gospel message. This may be your last chance to ask Jesus to come to your heart. Hey, I'm not, I'm not asking for money. God's not asking you to give money. God's not asking you to sign your name on a dotted line. God's not asking you to have a notarized letter. God's not asking anything of you because He did it all. He paid the price for sin. He paid it all. It's a free gift. It's a gift. And all the Lord is doing is extending out His hand with that gift you to accept it. All you have to do is accept it. Today's the salvation. All heads without all eyes closed. You know how to look around. Sir, ma'am, if that's you, why don't you come? I'll tell you what I'll do. If you make a move, I'll meet you myself. 
And I'll show you in the Bible how simple it is to know Christ as your Savior. And to have your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And to know, and to know that you'll be in heaven, that your sins have been forgiven. Why don't you come? This all is over as I begin to pray. Our dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for all your many blessings. God, I thank you all for these that have stepped out by faith to come. Lord, accept you as their Savior. God, I pray that you touch them. Lord, I pray for others, Lord, that slipped up their hands but didn't make the move. And Lord, God, I pray for others, Lord, that I believe they're here in this church and just couldn't slip up their hands, Lord. God, I pray that you touch them. God, I pray, Lord, that Lord, they get up with somebody. Lord, before it's eternally too late, when they can take the Bible and show them how they can be saved and have their sins forgiven. Lord, God, I pray, Lord, that you just help them and you touch them. God, I pray for our church family. God, I pray for all of our friends and family that are here. God, I pray that your hand be upon us all. Help us, Lord God, to serve you and to give you everything that we have. God, I pray, Lord, that Lord, we just, God, from this day forward, Lord, we purpose in our hearts that we will not change on Bible principle. We will not change on Bible doctrine. We will not change on our stance when serving you. God, I pray that we hold firm to the conviction to the standard that you've given us. Lord, I pray that we give you everything that we have. God, I thank you for what you have done for the Lord of Alabama Baptist Church. God, I thank you for what you are doing at the moment. God, I want to thank you in advance for what you're going to do at the Lord of Alabama Baptist Church, Lord God. We love you. Well, God, we praise you. Thank you for all that you have done. In Jesus' name. This altar's open. Thank you. This altar's open. We don't normally do this. We don't normally extend it like this. This altar's open once you come. I believe God's still dealing with somebody in this church. We, we hardly ever extend the altar call like this, but I do believe that God's dealing with somebody in this church. And this may be your last opportunity. And so I urge you, please, why don't you come? God has been good to us. I mean, if God's been good to you to give you another opportunity, to give you one more chance to accept Him as Savior. I urge you, please, I'll meet you. I'll come to you. If you'll step out, I'll take my Bible, and I'll show you how you can know for sure that Jesus is your Savior and that heaven can be your home, that your sins can be forgiven. This is your chance. Don't pass it off. You're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised the very next breath that you take. Hey, who knows? We leave out of this church today and get in our cars and start heading up the road and get out here on the interstate. Who knows? A tractor trailer will have to pull out. Hit your car. You just don't know. And I'd hate to think that you'd be sitting here and hear the gospel message and hear how simple and how easy it is to go to heaven and leave out of this place and die and go to hell. I hate to say that, but it's the God's honest truth. You would go to hell. And I don't want to see anybody go to hell. That's the reason why we have church. And that's the reason why I get up here and I holler and I scream. And I ran my way about the gospel message. Because I know it's true. And I know that Jesus is the only way. This is your chance. Why don't you come? I'll personally pray with you. Take my Bible and show you. God's good and He wants to be extra good to you here today if you accept Him.
Y'all fellowship one another.